It's 34 diagrams in 34 days, and we are on day 30. We are doing one of my favorite diagrams, the monopsony diagram. We're going to think about it as a story. On my y-axis, I've got wage, and on my x-axis, I've got quantity. Now, I've got supply to the sky. We think about the supply of labor. So this is the amount people are willing and able to work for. It's the wage they're willing to accept. Now, if I was a company and I wanted to hire this first person, we're going to call person number one, Kate. Kate is willing to accept five pounds. And so the marginal cost of hiring her went from zero workers to one worker. She wants five pounds. So my marginal cost of hiring her is five pounds. Then our second person, we're going to call her Alice. Alice is willing to supply her labor for six pounds per hour, up and across six pounds. But it's not quite that simple because to hire Alice, I'm going to have to adjust Kate's wage. Kate's not going to be happy if she finds out that Alice got hired as being paid more than her. So the marginal cost of hiring my second person is going to be the wage I'm going to have to pay them plus the extra one pound I'm going to have to pay to Kate. So the marginal cost is going to be seven. Now, I'm going to hire a third person. I'm going to call her Sophie. Here she is. Sophie, she's willing to work for seven pounds. But hiring her means I need to give an extra pound to Alice and another extra pound to Kate. So the marginal cost of hiring her is seven plus two. Each time I hire a new person at a higher wage rate, I have to go back and pay my other workers to level out the wage rate. So you can see that the marginal cost of hiring Sophie, seven plus two is nine. That's with my marginal cost of hiring Sophie. You can see if I were to continue with this story, that the marginal cost is going to diverge away from the supply. Now, we're talking about marginal cost of labor, but really this is a marginal factor cost because we could be talking about capital as well as workers. Happy with this? Now, I am a firm who needs to decide how many workers to hire. Each worker is going to create some products. I want to know how much additional product is made by each worker. So I can work out my marginal physical product, how many additional units of my product they make. But I want to know how much money that then brings me. If I times that by the price that I can receive for my good, that's going to give me my MRP, my marginal revenue of product. Now, this is essentially demand for labor. Demand is downward sloping, and so we have our MRP of labor in this case. I'm going to put a little L there as well. I'm going to tidy up my diagram so I can then read off of it. So in a perfectly competitive labor market, we would be demanding workers at a wage rate where the market would clear, where supply would equal demand. So the supply of labor would equal the MRP. However, we're not in a perfectly competitive labor market. We're in a monopsony. So they're going to produce at this quantity of labor, and the amount that they're going to pay is the supply of labor to get that many workers. So this is going to be the wage. Thank you.